This is four survival tips or life hacks that might just save your life. How to light a fire in soaking wet conditions. It's been raining for days and everything is wet. How do you find dry wood? How do you get a fire going when all the typical tinders are soaked? And how do you do it with a fire steel? Second one, how to get a fire going with a completely soaked lighter. It's probably happened to all of us. Uh, the rain or we fall in the water and our lighter won't light. I'm gonna show you how to easily, effectively, and quickly get that lighter working again so you can light a fire. Third, how to light a fire with a completely dead, smashed open lighter, part two. I did it before, I used a knife. A lot of people said, hey Ted, what if you don't have a knife? And that's a very good point. I'm gonna show you how to do it. As long as you got a spark, you can get a fire going and you don't even need to find any initial tinder. And a bonus, fourth skill. Show you how to make a quick, fast, and efficient boat that might just save your life, or perhaps just get you to float out and access your best fishing hole. I'm gonna show you all of that right now. But first, a message from the sponsor of this video, Anchor. I'm just here at a water access property and I have been finding this Anchor 757 powerhouse extremely helpful to have up here, both for projects and for peace of mind. In combination with these 100 watt Anchor solar panels, you can actually chain three of them together and hook them up to this Anchor 757 and charge from zero to 80% in only 3.6 hours. Plugging this into the wall goes from zero to 80% in only one hour. This is a 1500 watt unit and 1229 watt hours. And the thing that's super impressive about the Anchor power powerhouses in general is they have a 3000 battery cycle life that is six times longer than the industry average anchor backs that up with a five year warranty much better than the industry average of two years anchor also recently came out with the 555 powerhouse unit which is equally as impressive just with a little bit smaller capacity i also have the anchor 535 which is one that i'm more likely to bring into the back country because it's lighter they even have an anchor 521 which is even smaller so click the link in the description below and check out some of these awesome anchor products and pick yourself up something whether it's for at home or in the back country it's awesome peace of mind and be prepared let's get back to the video It's been raining here for two days straight, including a heavy, heavy downpour for the last four hours. It's still coming down. So I'm gonna show you how to find dry wood in these conditions, how to light a fire from only that dry wood, and do it with a fire steel. Here we go. First thing you want to do is you want to look for a dead standing tree and one that still has the crown at the top on it. If it's split off and broken, that allows water to get down inside the tree and it could be compromised with moisture. So you want to stay away from that if possible. This one unfortunately is no good, it's still wet. Even though it's dead, we're going to keep looking. Here I found dead standing cedar tree. One, you can see the bark has started falling off. It still has the crown. Why we're going after a dead standing like this is because even though it's soaked on the outside, inside of this should be dry. Using the tools that I brought, a saw and a knife, we should be able to process that down and access the dry wood inside with a few skills to be able to get a fire going when everything else is absolutely soaked. This is a very important skill to learn and to know uh, if you spend any amount of time in the back country. These branches here, although they're wet now, we'll snap them off and the inside is still dry and we'll save them for later along in the process. Once you saw into it, check it for dryness. A lot of people would wonder why you would use a fire steel and not a lighter. A fire steel always works even if it's wet right away. You just a couple scratches and it's good to go. It is harder to get a fire going with though. So 
you definitely have to keep that in mind. I still recommend packing waterproof matches, packing several Bic lighters, but in the event that all else fails, uh, this can be a faster way to get something going. Uh, is a good survival tool to have for sure. And if you can light a fire with one of these, you're gonna be better at lighting a fire with anything else. So it's definitely good to practice. Now that we've found our dead standing and verified that it's dry inside, what we're gonna do is just get our secondary stuff we put on after some of those branches that we cut and we're gonna put it to the side here just so it's ready to go. If we get a fire going, we have something then we can add to it. Ideally, in this situation, you would have some sort of other cover. If you can find any other shelter under a big canopy, or ideally if you set up a tarp. And in this case, if you don't have one and you need to get it going, you can use your body to shelter the area where you're gonna be lighting a fire. Inside here is dry wood but outside is soaked about a quarter inch in. So how do we process that out? Uh, particularly if we only have a knife and get to the dry stuff. So what I'm gonna use here is a technique called batoning. You just put your knife right either in the middle or to the edge, depending on how much material you wanna take off. You just go like that You pick up a piece of wood and you smack the knife. It splits open and as you can see inside there is bone dry material perfectly listen to that perfectly dry that's what we want we just continue that until we make matchstick sized pieces of wood continue that process This is how you can get a fire going from a single log without having any other tinder or kindling whatsoever. So now I've got a nice pile of dry tinder. Listen, you can hear how dry that is. Now, I'm gonna create what's called a feather stick. Some people get really good at this. You don't have to be that good, you just have to be good enough to make fine shavings of the inner dry part of the wood, fine enough to take a spark from the fire steel or a lighter. You'll get better with practice, but essentially you just wanna shave little pieces like this. So it creates little feather type shavings there. Those are all nice and dry. Make a few, they can be a little cruder, but those you're gonna lay on top of your initial small flame. The last one, try to make it much finer. Another tip, you don't wanna just light it and smother it. So put two pieces of wood here on either side or at least one like this. So when you do finally get a flame going, you can rest your next layer and it will prop on top and allow that flame to come up and light this and you won't smother it before it gets a chance. Now if things are damp with the fire steel, put it right in the middle and then just go hard. There we go. You got this one ready. Lay that on top. You got your secondary pieces to lay on top of that. Again, in such a way that it won't smother the fire. 
and always be mindful of what you do with your lighter or your fire steel after you get it going it's so easy because it's such a delicate flame to just kind of put it down and you either lose it or you end up building the fire and you burn it we won season four of alone 75 days and i came close a few times and i saw a lot of contestants lose their fire shields just like that so uh, you don't want to mess around now that we have this going we can slowly add wetter pieces and they should ignite now And then you just add your bigger pieces from there. Just keep building. This is how you light a fire when everything is absolutely soaked. And that's how you get dry wood, even in the freaking rainforest. That's how we did it on a loan almost every freaking time. And always find dry wood by finding a proper dead standing and batoning out the inner core, getting to that dry wood. You don't even need any other material. You just process that tree down into smaller and smaller pieces get it lit then build your way up from there all from a single tree you never know this trick could save your butt but it's also an important skill to know regardless if it's a survival situation or not and for the second survival skill get your wet lighter going again simple fast effective and could save your life well i've literally heard of people freezing to death because they couldn't get a fire going because their lighter was wet i'd say that's good and soaked how about you Look at that. Water dripping out of it. Won't light. Not even a chance. You can hear the gas, but it won't light. My favorite way to get this going again is the simplest, fastest, most effective way. You just shake it out a bit to get any like soaking water out of there. And then just take anything you have dry. Hopefully you got a dry shirt. If you do, this is the best way to do it. You just go like this, take your dry shirt, rub it on the wheel, just like that. Rub it on the wheel. Just dry that wheel, switch to your dry part of the shirt, just go around the wheel. I think maybe I've gone around two or three times, nothing fancy. Let's try it out, bam. That simple, it's that simple. I even had a couple of friends that found themselves in a survival situation that couldn't get a fire going, couldn't cook food, and it was really cold, and they were hypothermatic. They didn't die, but they didn't know how to do that. That's all they had to know how to do. So, um, you know, in that case, that's where a fire steel is good because it still gives you sparks even if it's wet. But with this little skill, you can get a flame pretty easily, whether it's wet or not. But a Bic lighter is pretty good survival tool. I suggest packing a few of them. But, you know, it is more moving parts, more mechanical. You're relying on fuel. And so, um, you know, having a fire steel is a good backup for sure. Once it's lit again, you can, you know, hold it open a little bit and dry it out a bit more the next way to dry a soaked lighter is by actually dragging the wheel over the flint not my favorite way because you literally wear down the flint quite a bit but it is a method that you can use i'm going to show you how to do that right now shake any of that soaked fluid out use your hand just keep doing that Until you start to see some sparks. Let's try it. Nothing yet. You see how the shirt method is is even be is better. And this I don't like because you're wearing down your flint. Let's keep going. There. So I saw some sparks. There we go. Bam. So that's the other method to draw the flint. Maybe in a certain situation, your clothes are absolutely soaked. It's pounding rain and you just don't have anything dry enough to dry that flint. It doesn't need to be super dry, keep in mind, but maybe if everything is just so soaked, it's out of the question. You just put your hand up against the rain, dry it as best possible, and you do that method and then you get your flame going that way. So that is the second way. The other method is you can just actually blow on it the wind dry stuff 
Test number three. Lighter down. Lighter is in the drink. Won't light. So you can literally just Shake it, shake it, shake it. Look, see how it's sparking already? It's starting to get a spark. There we go. Once you get that flame using this method, hold it for a little longer because when you blow on it, you can blow water down into the little gas valve and that can restrict the gas coming out. So you let it let it stay lit for a little bit to make sure everything's nice and dried out and then it should go again every time. So those are three methods to get a fire going with a soaked lighter that won't light otherwise. Three simple and effective methods. Um, the first one is my number one favorite. I can't believe how easy it is. And the other ones are simple too. So keep that in mind. The third survival skill, and that's how to get a fire going with a completely dead, smashed open lighter, part two. I did it before, I used a knife. A lot of people said, hey Ted, what if you don't have a knife? And that's a very good point. And if all you have is just this lighter, even if all the wood and tinder around is completely saturated and soaked, how you do it? Well, this method will work when everything's soaked. A lot of people before said, hey Ted, why don't you just use the birch bark or whatever? This method will not work with soaked tinder like this, fresh off the tree. Um, whatever when it has been raining the way it has here for several days but what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna create some shavings off the plastic itself plastic is an oil product it is flammable and it doesn't absorb any water whatsoever there might be some surface water you just brush it blow it off and then you use this method I'm gonna show you right now first thing you're gonna do is you're gonna pop off the metal guard here a little prying be careful not to lose your striker wheel. There we go. That's what you're gonna want. Make sure to keep this. Now find yourself a dry surface. Inside, underneath, should be dry enough so I can have a flat surface that's not soaked. This is just to provide a dry surface. Now what I'm gonna do, but I'm gonna use the metal guard from the lighter itself to scrape the plastic and create some shavings. I've created a little pile of plastic shavings using the metal guard from the lighter itself. This allows you to get dry, flammable tinder when everything else is soaked. Now inside here, what creates the spark is often referred to as the flint. It's actually a really tiny ferro rod. So it's a really small one of these, right? It's not actually a flint, but the sparks that it create are not hot enough to light things in the same kind of way. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create a little pile of flint dust by gently rolling this wheel over top of the flint inside, but not such that it creates a spark. And I'm gonna do that 100, 200 times on top of my little pile of plastic shavings that I can hit with a spark after and hopefully get a flame. I'll see the gray dust on there. Created a little pile of flint dust. Now I'm gonna hit it with a spark and hopefully get a flame. My secondary tinder here. All right, here we go. Bam, look at that. You can see it's bubbling. There's a flame going and Bam, look at that. 
you can see it's bubbling. There's a flame going. And bam, look at that. Works. See how this birch bark, even though it's the dry stuff, the dry stuff I could find is still having a hard time taking a flame because it's so wet from the rain. And that's how you get a fire going with a completely dead, no fuel, smashed open lighter with absolutely nothing else except the flint inside, the lighter, and the metal guard. Fourth skill. Say you're hiking along through the woods and you get to a spot and you need to cross the water. Perhaps the water's super cold or it's just such a long way to walk around, prone to getting injured walking around, burning tons of calories. Maybe it's just excessively far, but uh, it's not realistic to actually try to swim across. This is a quick and fast, efficient way to make yourself a boat that can get you across these areas. Now, it doesn't work in super strong winds or waves. You gotta be careful, but when you're in a pinch, this could just save your butt. You are gonna need a tarp. A lot of people have this when they're out camping or they're in the back country. Hopefully you have one. This is a large tarp. You don't need one this size. I would have preferred one a little bit smaller, easier to work with in tight spaces. However, that's what I had. So now that I've got it laid out, I'm gonna start filling it with lightweight debris and some boughs. Let's get started. Now taking some of these low branches on this tree will not kill it. It will continue to live for its entire life expectancy. Okay, so relatively quickly, I've just cut some low hanging boughs, ones that hang out over the water, go down on the tree that are gonna die in a couple of years. Don't harm the tree, and I filled my tarp with them. That's gonna provide some volume, and now I'm gonna wrap the tarp closed. Everything in place. Bend them around. This is where the paracord comes in. So you're gonna take some cordage. Hopefully you have some. Let's start with the corner. All right, so I got this all wrapped up. A simple setup like this just might save your butt or make your life a lot easier. You can use the tarp for shelter and you're hiking through. You need to get across something. Uh, water's too cold. It's too far of a way to walk around, too unreasonable. There's a cliff, who knows? And you just need to get across a body of water. This is one way to do it. So let's test it out. Are you nervous? I am. Oh 
All right. It works amazing. All right, I'm out here on my boat. Now that is a crude and efficient boat, I gotta say, and it's actually quite comfortable. Nice and squishy with all these bows. And uh, I've got lots of freeboard. Look, all around the sides, like quite a bit, quite a bit. Pretty sweet. Pretty sweet indeed. You can't really paddle it like a normal canoe, it just kind of spins. So you have to sort of paddle forward like this or do what's called a sculling draw where essentially you do a figure eight and you pull in this way, this way, and you cut the water back up as you go. Or you can just go like this if you don't know how to do that. And there you have it. You could see how much faster this could be if you had a big crossing or really cold water and uh, how much less energy it actually is to get across. So I came from all the way over there. Not the other side. I have no problem paddling around this whole bay or much further. Yeah, I think I could even manage a bit of wind and a few waves in this thing. This system could come in very handy and get out to a good fishing spot that might have a honey hole of fish that you couldn't otherwise get to. You don't have to walk the shore and try to cast or do whatever from the shore. You can come out jig, pretty good skill to know, I gotta say. There's probably better ways to do it, but essentially just fill your tarp up with debris. Bows are quick and efficient and easy. And uh, tie it all together, make sure there's no holes or whatever holes are under the water and launch it. I did have a paddle with me. If in a situation where you don't have a paddle, you will have to make one or use your hands or a stick. Owls are a good thing to use because uh, they're light. So you could fill it with other debris like leaves and that would work, but they're often wet and that would make it heavy. It would make it challenging to lift it Right here, there's a bunch of wild cranberries. Mm. Tastes like a sour apple, that one. I mean, cranberries are not the sweetest, but they're pretty darn good wild edible, I gotta say. And uh, it's a nice little patch here. When you're doing stuff like this, you keep your eyes open while you're on the go. You come across them, collect a bunch save them for later and continue on your way. If you're using this for your shelter, dual purpose. Same with the bows. You might be using the bows for bedding or insulation in your shelter. And you could use them in the boat in the day. 
and in your shelter at night same with the tarp and uh, depending on the situation possibly use a lot less calories and resources if you had to do it all twice cranberries.